We are observing Purushottam Brata. Shri Krishna said to Narayan, in front of extra month. Aham ete riyata loke pratitah purushottama tathayam api lokeshu pratitah purushottama asmai samarpitah sarve ye gunamai samstita mat sadrisham upagamya masana madipo bhavet jagat pujyo jagat bandyo maso yam tu bhavishyati sarve masah sakamascha nishkamo yam maya krita a kamah sarva kamava yo dhima sam prapujet, karmani bhasma sat kritva mam evaishyati asankshayam. Kadachi mama bhaktanam aparadeti ganyate, purushottama bhaktanam na parada kadachana. Ya etasmin mahamura japa dan adi varjitaha, sat karma snan rohita, deva tirta dvija dvisha. Jayante dur baga dushtah para bagyo pajivana na kadachi tsukkam tesham svapna pishasha shringavat. Jenaham archito bhakti masa smin purushottame dhana putra sukkam bhunktva paschad golokavasa bhak. He Ramapati, He Ramapati Narayan. Just as I am celebrated in this world by the name Purushottam, similarly, these Adimas too will be renowned in the world by the name Purushottam. Now I offer all my qualities to this month. Becoming like me from today onwards, this Adimas is the monarch of all the other months and is the most worshipable and most adored in the world. All other months are sakama, that is, they will grant worldly desires. This month, however, is nishkama. Those who worship this month, either without any desires or with all types of desires, will have all their karmas burned. Then they will achieve me. My bhaktas sometimes commit offenses, but in this Purushottam month, they will be protected from committing any offense. In this Adimas, those greatly foolish persons who neglect to perform auspicious activities, such as japa, giving in charity, visiting and bathing at the holy places, and who are envious of the Dvijas, are deemed wicked, unfortunate, and living at the cost of others. Thus, they will not attain a sense of happiness even in their dreams. Conversely, those who are filled with bhakti will take advantage of this Purushota month to perform archan to me. After enjoying worldly happiness, such as wealth, sons, and so on, they will eventually attain residence in Goloka. And we are hearing Brahmastava prayers of Brahma to Supreme Lord. Yesterday we heard this verse, My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. Yesterday we heard commentary by disciples of Srila Sai Maharaj. Today you will hear Bishwana Jagavita Kuru's commentary. Brahma prayed, 
only by Krishna Bhakti is it possible for the living entity who has discarded his material coverings to realize the bliss of Brahman. Being blessed with a particle of mercy from your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. And this we heard yesterday. Matsya Avatar says, Advised and favored by me, you will know everything about my glories, which are known as Parabrahma, because they will manifest within your heart. So it is only by the will of Krishna one can get that realization. In Upanishad also that verse is there. Nayam atma pravachane na labhyo na medaya na bahu na shrutena yam evai savrinyute te na labhyas ta seisha atma vrinyute tanum svam. One cannot attain realization of Supreme Lord by giving lectures, by great intellect, not even by hearing many scriptures, but only one whom the Supreme Lord will choose to him, he will reveal his own transcendental eternal form. Whom he will choose, surrendered soul. One who will accept the will of Krishna and will act accordingly for his service, then he can get realization by Krishna's mercy, no one else, no one can forcefully get by his own effort. Sridhar Swami explains this verse as follows. By Krishna's mercy, one can know the Supreme Brahman. To obtain a particle of the Lord's mercy means that the Jnani performed mixed devotional service previously. The Lord bestows the mercy of Bhakti Yoga to that Jnani who, giving up Avidya and Vidya, accepts pure Bhakti. However, one who gives up Bhakti in preference to Jnana and enthusiastically pursues Brahman, though he is a guru for thousands of Jnanis, studies scriptures, and practices yoga for a long time, will never know the true nature of the Lord. Jnana Mishra Bhakti means they are doing devotion to Krishna, but with the desire to get liberation. That is Jnana Mishra Bhakti. Brahma Buddha Prasanatmana Shochati Nakangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Mnabhate Param. Then, when such Jnani uh, gets the mercy of Krishna and or his pure devotee, then he will give up that ignorance and also that vidya, that knowledge of Satya Guna by which one can pursue liberation. He will give up that and accept pure bhakti. Pure bhakti means there is only one target, satisfaction of Krishna. And that is eternally. It is not for any other purpose. And always, because Krishna is eternal and devotee is eternal, so bhakti is also eternal. That is pure devotion without any other desires. He he can get a realization of Krishna by the grace of him. But one who does not do bhakti, but does jnana, then he, even he may be guru, like Prakashananda Saraswati, who was a guru of so many jnanis. And Saravam Bhattacharya also. And he was very learned in scripture, both Saravam Bhattacharya and Prakashananda Saraswati. But they could not know the real nature of Krishna or of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu until they got 
grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then by that grace they could understand the true nature of the Lord. Next verse, tat astu menata saburi bhago bhave tra vanya tra tu vati rascham yenaham ekopi bhava jananam bhutva nisheve tava pada pallavam. My dear Lord, I therefore pray to be so fortunate that in this life as Lord Brahma or in another life, Wherever I take my birth, I may be counted as one of your devotees. I pray that wherever I may be, even among the animal species, I can engage in devotional service to your lotus feet. This is pure devotional prayer. Srila Bhakti Thakur also expressed this in his songs. Poshu poke ha, poshu poki hoye taki, swarge baniroe, taba bhakti rohu bhakti binuda hridoe. I may be born as a bird or as animal or anything. I may be in hell or in heavenly plants. Swarge baniroe. I don't mind. But I, my prayer is, let devotion to you always be there. Tava Bhakti Rohu Bhakti Bino. In my heart, let devotion always be there for you. Because those who are realized souls, they understand that they are not this body. And that their necessity is actually service of Krishna to fully satisfy their real self. And that devotion cannot be obstructed by anything material. So they don't mind. Even if I'm animal, that is no problem. It means in animal body. But let me have devotion to you. Let me get your service. Only those who are on that level of realization, they can understand why they are praying only for this. Because they know that is actually really my necessity. Uh, so they don't mind. Like for example, if you are hungry, then you require food. So you don't mind whether you are getting food in a car which is green color or big car, or small car, or broken car, or uh, expensive car, or yellow, it doesn't matter. Because what you need is food. So if you are getting food, then you are happy in any car. So that is not a problem. The only thing is pure devotion, and we can get pure devotion by the association of pure devotee. That is why also that Vritrasur, he was in demon body, but devotee. So he uh, prayed. According to my karma, let me be wherever I have to be and let me get whatever I have to get. Oh Krishna, I'm only praying to you that as long as this is there, uh, let me have friendship with your devotees. Because if you have association of devotees, then you will get devotion. And that is what is the only thing what is required. And fulfilling for Jiva soul. Here in uh, Disciples of Sainvaraj didn't give any commentary. Bishwana Chakurti Thakur gave. Krishna said, O Brahma, crash jewel of all knowers of sadhana and sadhya. That is practice and goal. Sadhana means practice, sadhya is goal. 
so Krishna told him, you are crash jewel of all lovers of sadhana. Sadhana and sadhya. What is your desire after describing jnana and bhakti in your prayers? Consider carefully Brahma and pray for the most valuable thing. Indicating himself as a servant, Brahma replies to Sri Krishna, O oh Master, not. Yes, I have discerned the most auspicious thing of all, Bhuri Bhago. Whether I get a high birth as Lord Brahma or a low birth as a deer, Turascham, for many births with no chance for liberation, since I will lose the opportunity to attain bhakti, I pray to take birth as one of your devotees, either advanced or neophyte. So, I am not praying for liberation. I am praying for devotion to you. In any birth I may be. The following is an outline of Brahma's prayers. In the first verse, here it is, uh, Brahma is telling, whether I get high birth as Lord Brahma or a low birth as a deer, for many births with no chance for liberation. Because in that impersonal liberation, this further is, since I will lose the opportunity to attain bhakti, I pray to take birth as one of your devotees, either advanced or neophyte. There is no service there in impersonal liberation. So I don't want that. Uh, let me take birth, but let me have devotion to you. The following is an outline of Brahma's prayers. In the first verse of this chapter, Brahma expressed the excellence of the Lord's sweetness. In the second and thirty-eighth verses, praising the Lord's power, Brahma exhibited a mixture of bhakti and jnana. In the third verse, Jnana Prayasam, he concludes that uh, that is very famous verse. You, Remember, jnana prayasam the passenament, one has to throw away jnana and only surrender to Krishna. In the third verse, he concludes that bhakti is superior. In the eighth verse, he shows the supremacy of pure bhakti to Krishna. In the 19th and 27th verses, he derides kevala jnana, means exclusive jnana in personal knowledge. In the fourth and fifth verses, Brahma shows the uselessness of Kevala Jnana, the exclusive uh, knowledge, and the success of Kevala Bhakti, means exclusive devotion. In the 28th and 29th verses, he discusses Jnana mixed with Bhakti. In the 24th verse, he discusses Shanta Bhakti, that is passive Bhakti, and in the 30th verse he discusses Dasya Bhakti, means this is the 30th verse. From the 31st verse, Brahma, having submerged in the ocean of Krishna's sweetness, praises the devotees immersed in Vatsalya Raga, parent love and other intimate relationships with the Lord. Raga means attachment. Vatsalya Raga means attachment in parental love. So up to here, he concluded that Bhakti is the best and he wants Bhakti. And in this verse, he came up to Dasya Bhakti, the one who wants to be engaged in the service of Krishna 
and by his own initiative he will go to serve. Shanta, Shanta Bhakti means he is at disposal of Krishna. When Krishna will come and use him for some his purpose, that will be his service. But Dasya Bhakta voluntarily, willingly goes to accept service, practical. So next verse. Aho ti dhanya vraja go ramanya stanyam ritam pitam ativa te muda yasam vibho vatsa ta ratma jatmana ya tripta ye diapi na chalam advarah. Almighty Lord, how greatly fortunate are the cows and ladies of Brindavan, the nectar of whose breast milk you have happily drunk for, to your full satisfaction, taking the form of their calves and children. All the Vedic sacrifices performed from time immemorial up to the present day have not given you as much satisfaction. Again, they gave from time immemorial. I am Adya Api. Even until now, Adya means from beginning. Okay. Let's see. Here they did not give any commentary. Bishwana Chakravati Thakur gives commentary, Brahma prayed, though totally unqualified, I have prayed to become your devotee. If you wish, you may fulfill it. Certainly it is not proper for me to pray to attain the elevated stage of your devotees engaged in the spontaneous attraction of Vatsalya Bhav and other moods. I can only praise them. This is expressed in two verses. Brahma prayed, the cows and gopis of Braja are supremely fortunate. The word aho expresses extreme surprise. You, with your transcendental body, full of eternal bliss and knowledge, have taken the form of the cowherd boys and the calves to drink the nectarian milk from their mother's breasts with extreme bliss. Here cows also, they are in Brindavan, cows, they also have that Vatsalya Bhav because they are feeding Krishna with their milk. With each mouthful, you experienced ever ever increasing bliss, Ativa Muda. In your forum as calves, you could not even tolerate the time it took to milk the cows. Without taking, means Krishna went uh, in the form of calves there before, because they are in cows, you know, when cow has calf, then because of affection, that milk is there. So they will bring calf and he will drink, or sometimes they will only show calf and then they will milk the cow and then at the end they will bring calf, or in between they will remove like this. So Krishna in the form of calf did not want to wait till they finish milking. He went there forcefully to take that. And cows were getting bliss of serving Krishna, and Krishna is getting bliss of accepting devotion of his devotees. Without taking the forum of the cowherd boys, it would not have been possible to drink the milk of so many different mothers. 
And they were all, these cows, they were all desiring this within their heart. Uh, the, if, if only we could feed Krishna directly. Yes, our milk goes to Krishna, but if we could feed him directly, so Krishna fulfilled that and he became their cows. Oh, powerful one, you took many forms out of extreme greed to drink. Here again, we, we should not understand this greed as something bad. Greed is bad when it is, Krishna says in Gita, three things will take you to hell. Kama, Kroda, Lobha. Lust, anger and greed. But, that is for some selfish, exploitive purpose. But devotees, they have extreme greed, lobha, to serve Krishna. And Krishna also has extreme greed to serve his devotees. So that is transcendental. This greed, transcendental greed, will liberate you and will take you to that lila. You took many forms out of extreme greed to drink. You could not even miss the nectar from one breast. Since they gave you such bliss, there is no doubt that the bodies of the cows and the mothers were transcendental, full of eternal knowledge and bliss. Yes, his associates, they are all transcendental, eternal. Otherwise, Krishna cannot be satisfied, but he was fully satisfied. All the Vedic sacrifices performed by myself, means Brahma, Shiva, and others from time immemorial up to the present day with perfect actions and mantra chanting have not given you as much satisfaction. Because that is Vaidhi Bhakti. But the here, gopis, elderly and also cows, they have Raga Bhakti. Great attachment. And they are not seeing Krishna as Supreme Lord. So there is no open reverence. Only pure love, Shuddha Bhakti. Pure. That is highest. Krishna himself said in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I am not happy with this open reverence, worship and opulence in this. I like this Raga Bhaktas. And Krishna also becomes like human being, not as God. So Krishna was thinking, since long time, I did not give this bhakti, did not distribute, since long time. Means in previous day of Brahma, he gave. In this, not. So I will appear as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I will practice this and also distribute to others. This Raga Bhakti. Raganuga, the love which Brajabasis they have for Krishna, and especially he wanted to taste the love of Radharani, topmost servitor, and he also gave that chance to Jivas, not that we can become Radharani, but by assisting Radharani, serving Radharani, we can also taste that. That is topmost quality and topmost quantity of devotion and consequently also of bliss. Next verse. Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam, nanda gopa vrajau kasam, yan mitram paramanandam, Purnam Brahma Sanatanam. <laughs> this is also famous verse. 
how greatly fortunate are Nanda Maharaj, the cowherd men, and all the other inhabitants of Braja Bhumi. There is no limit to their good fortune, because the absolute truth, the source of transcendental bliss, the eternal Supreme Brahman has become their friend. This is spiritual devotion. It is not something material. Otherwise, Brahma would not give much importance to that. As before, he said, the cowherd boys, uh, Krishna also cowherd boy, no importance. But now he understands, when he got the grace, he understands that this is spiritual prema. So one who can get this is actually most fortunate. He's most happy. So by following the process given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as it is, we can attain that Raga Bhakti of Vrindavan. Here they explained this translation is quoted from Srila Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 6, text 149. Vishwana Chakrita Kur explains after praising the Ragatmika Vatsalya Prima, deep spontaneous parental affection of the Brajavasis, Brahma glorified those with Ragatmika Sakya Prima and all those relishing intimate relationships with the Lord. The neuter case is used instead of the masculine case as a matter of traditional usage. Ragatmika means those whose nature, by default, inherent nature, is the deep attachment to Krishna, Rag. All personal associates of Krishna in Vrindavan, gopis, parents and cows, everyone there, they are Ragatmikas. They have inherent rag for Krishna. It is one with them. They are made of that. So no condition so can become a ragatmika. But we can have a raganuga. Raganuga means we can follow that raga. According to our liking, when we will hear about Lila of Krishna from bona fide source, and when that spiritual greed means uh, deep attraction for certain way of love, of service of Krishna, will be awakened. And it has to be genuine spiritual. It should not be from mental platform or physical platform or because of some anarthas or uh, misidentification of self. Like uh, uh, someone hears Gopi's love is highest. Yes, I want it. Why he wants? Because he hears it is highest. So I want to be highest. So that is uh, not a genuine desire to serve Krishna, but to be highest for name and fame or some any kind of other enjoyment. So this spiritual loba, it is not so cheap as some people think. Spiritual loba, not from any lower consciousness. It has to be really spiritual loba that is awakened in purified heart when he gets in contact with that Brajavasi uh, whom he is very much greedy to attain that same 
Bhava, then that greed is qualification for Aganuga Bhakti. You will uh, develop that devotion under the guidance of that devotee. Like parents, how they are serving, they will teach you, they will engage you, how you can serve in parental affection. Or if someone here, Vishnu uh, Chakataku is saying, before was Vatsalya, parental, now he is explaining about friendship also. So, and there are different friends also of Krishna. So whom you will like most, how he is serving Krishna, and you will want that, then that is qualification. They will then train you and teach you how to serve, and they will engage you in the service of Krishna in that way. That is Raganuga. So we, Tatashta Shakti Jivas, we can have connection with Raganuga. And by that Raganuga, we can attain our eternal spiritual form in relation to Krishna, and we will serve Krishna, but under the guidance of this Ragatmikas, and we will not be the losers. We will be gainers if we are under the guidance of them. Srila Siddhar Maharaj also explained, we may have some conception of heat of sun because we are feeling it from here. So we cannot say we have no conception of heat, no feeling of heat. But at the same time, we cannot say that what kind of heat is there on sun globe. But there are some entities are there also. They can tolerate that heat. That is impossible for us. So we have certain uh, capacity like that. We are not personal associates of Krishna. We can follow them. And following them will fully satisfy us. That is not anything that someone mentally thinking, oh, then I will be deprived. Why not directly? Well, like this. That is all material conceptions. We have to serve under them. That will be of our highest benefit. You will be more satisfied than you can imagine. There will be no lack, no disappointment. It will be beyond all your expectations. But we have to get genuine thing. We should not try with some ulterior motives. Further, the word Anandam indicates Brahman as described in Brihat Aranyaka Upanishad, Satyam Vigyanam Anandam Brahma. The supreme reality is divine knowledge and bliss. The word Param is used with it to indicate that Krishna is the basis of Brahman is a Parabrahman. Brahman here uh, in the sense of Brahma Jyoti. Because this Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan, Bhagavan generally always means Bhagavan Supreme Lord with all potency like this. But Brahman and Paramatma sometimes can be used for this impersonal aspect or for localized or partial aspect Paramatma. But sometimes Brahman can also directly refer to Bhagavan Paramatma also. So you have to know under the guidance of uh, pure devotee where in scripture uh, what is meant. The word Purnam indicates that Sri Krishna is distinct from the avatara forms who are also Brahma Swarup. All uh, avatars, they are also Brahma Swarup, means they are, uh, they are omnipotent Supreme Lord, one same person, only Lila is different. But Krishna is distinct because he is the source of all avatars, 
and also in him there is maximum rasa exhibited, not in any other avatar, like in Krishna. Krishna is the friend, but not a temporary friend. Krishna is the eternal friend of Sri Dham and others. From this eternal friendship, it is also understood that Sri Dham and others are also eternal. If I make a statement, he is an excellent Brahmana because his Brahminical qualities are excellent, then the person's excellence is also understood. Similarly, in speaking of the eternality of Krishna's friendship, the friends are also understood to be eternal. This must be explained since the word Mitra connotes simply an ordinary friend. So here Bishan Chakrathakura explaining, here Mitra, because it is in relation to Krishna who is eternal, means his eternal associates, as in previous verse. This must be understood. That uh, we are speaking about eternal devotion. All the inhabitants of Brindavan ruled by Nanda Maharaj down to the birds and beasts were fortunate. What then to speak of Nanda himself and his cowherd men? Who can describe the fortune of those who became the friend of Paramanandam Brahma Sanatanam? That supreme bliss, eternal supreme bliss. It is indescribable. The Gopas themselves say, O oh Nanda, everyone in Braja has uncontrollable attraction to your son, and he, means Krishna, has natural affection for us. What is the cause? Then, in, in Bhagavatam, uh, answer is there in 26th chapter, 10th canto, the cause is that Krishna is Purna Brahma, the complete absolute truth. Therefore, the inhabitants of Braja give the topmost bliss to Krishna and receive the topmost bliss in return. Witnessing this exchange of love, Lord Brahma repeats the phrase Aho Bhagyam twice to indicate his extreme bliss and astonishment. Because now he is witnessing this, before he could not recognize. But once, if with devotion you can get darshan of Krishna and his loving relationship with all these devotees, then you will be astonished. And when you will get touch with that, actually, then you will naturally have attraction to attain that. So that attraction is qualification if it is spiritual, genuine, not from mental or subconscious or something. It, it must come from awakened Atma by the grace of pure devotee. Then it, when you have that strong desire to serve Krishna in a particular way as certain devotees do, that will be starting point of your Aganuga practice. Before that, you cannot do artificially Raganuga because you have no attachment, no uh, uh, appreciation for attachment of Brajabasis. So then, that is starting point. Then you have to do Raganuga Sadhana. They will engage you in the service of Krishna. Then gradually you can attain full blown that. Then you are qualified to it enter into Krishna Lila. You cannot just go there, oh, I would like to go, but you are not qualified. There they are all serving Krishna intensely. You cannot go and enjoy there and with all your anarthas and other desires and attachment like this. It is not like you can just jump to Goloka. You have to attain that level of devotion 
before you can enter. Lila is not for your personal enjoyment. So let me play with Krishna and like, no. There is only service and very intense service. In Vaikuntha is also only service. But in Brindaban it is so intense, you cannot imagine. So how you can just jump there with all these anarthas? And there is gradual procedure. You have to cross this material world. You have to go to Biraja river, then Brahma Jyoti, then Vaikuntha, Yodhya, all these planes of devotion. You have to cross and then you can attain, ultimately you can attain that intense devotion to Krishna. So Brahma is here astonished to see this. It is not so cheap. Sahaji, as they think it is, just you will, a little you will think, imagine, and I'm gopi, I'm this. You will not get real thing, imagination only. It's not so easy. There is a process. So tomorrow we'll hear further.